the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I'm a whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is top, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Juggernaut. Hampton Crossing is quiet now, and the solid, respectable people who live there are going about their business with the same easy pace as before. But to many of them, it will never be quite the same again. Yes, the people of Hampton Crossing will tell you they made a mistake not long ago, a terrible mistake. There was mob violence and death, and the men and women who were part of it still wince inwardly as they pass the place where it happened. They can still see the flaming torches, the assault waves surging up the steps of the Hall of Justice on Park Street. They can still hear the cries for blood. Lynch him! Don't holler justice at us, shut up. We'll show you like I don't want to kill us. If the law won't do it, we will. Wait a minute! Listen to me! Get that battery ram in action, man. Come on, all together. Come on! There was a mob killing that night in Hampton Crossing. But there will never be another. The mob was a juggernaut, and neither the sheriff nor anyone else could have stopped them. They had to stop themselves, and they did in a very unusual way. But more unusual still was the thing that caused it all. Ten days lay between that terrible night at the courthouse and its beginnings in the library of Henry Ellerby's big house on the hill. Josh Ellerby sat across the desk from his brother listening, the green-shaded lamp between them making a caricature of Henry's face as he talked. Well, Josh, we've both been a part of Hampton Crossing for a long time, haven't we? Twenty years. Twenty-two, to be exact. And we've both come a long way, Josh. I've come to love this town and the folks who live here. I've given most of them good jobs in my mills, provided a good living for them, put their kids through school, taken care of them when they were sick. Of course, Henry. Uh, is that why you asked me to come here, to tell me... I think it's time for a little self-analysis, Josh. Time to stand off a ways and look at each other. Yep, I've done a lot for the people here. But I think you've done even more, in a way. Why, well, I don't know, Henry. Yes. I see their bodies put clothes on their backs, but you own their hearts. Why, well, I've tried to be good to them. You've done better than that. They have an immense faith in you, Josh. I had faith in you, too. That's why I've let you handle my affairs. You could have at least been honest with me, Josh. I have some respect for an out-and-out crook who has the guts to play the part to the hilt. I was afraid that's why you asked me to come here. If I didn't have the figures right in front of me, I'd never believed it myself. Well, Henry, what do you plan to do about it? You're through as of tomorrow morning. Both as my manager and my ex my executor. 
Furthermore, I'll give you one week to produce the money you've embezzled from me. Otherwise, I'm taking it up at the sheriff's office. Is that clear enough? Not quite. The money isn't the real reason, is it, Henry? It's pretty real to me. $40,000. No. You're jealous of me because this town, the people in it, love me. They're mine because I succeeded where you failed. What are you talking because about? Because of that faith you talked about. That's what you want to destroy, Henry. The money is nothing to you. You want to destroy the people's faith in me. Isn't that true? Why, you... You hypocritical faith. You won't destroy their faith in me, Henry. I'm not going to let you. Where did you get that gun? Does that matter now? You know this won't get you anywhere. My daughter, Kit, if anything happens to me, you'll have to account to her. Every penny. If she marries, Henry, don't forget that. The money is mine Henry. until she marries. Josh, put that gun down. You'll be found out, don't you understand? Kit will... Never mind, Kit. The people down there need me. They've got to have someone to lean on. I won't let you kill their confidence in me. Yes! I'm sorry, Henry. But the people here believe in me. It, it must always be that way. The prologue of Juggernaut, the Signal Oil Company, is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. If you've stopped at a signal service station recently, you probably noticed a poster picturing a tire, a battery, a fan belt, radiator hose, windshield wiper blade, and other accessories. Well, this is to remind you that in addition to being headquarters for Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and Signal Premium Motor Oil, your signal dealer also features a wide selection of automotive accessories, most of which he's prepared to install for you while you wait. And every item is of finest recognized quality that your signal dealer is proud to stand back up. It's tires, for instance, or Lees, famous Lees of Conshohocken, for 45 years the finest of first-run tires. His batteries are built to signal's own rigid specifications for trouble-free service and long life. And your signal dealer's polishes, radiator cleaner, leak sealer, and other automotive accessories are nationally advertised brands. So to ready your car for summer trips, stop by your signal service station this week for a checkover of these little items that can make such a big difference in driving pleasure. It's part of your signal dealer's complete service to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now back to the whistler. It's strange, isn't it, Josh? This feeling you have about the people of Hampton Crossing, the merchants and farmers and housewives, the children who tag along after you on the street, calling you Uncle Josh. And stranger still is the feeling they have for you, the faith, almost the reverence that your brother Henry only half understood. You knew the showdown was coming last night when he summoned you to his home on the hill. So, you came prepared to kill him. But you knew, too, that it wouldn't end there. That the marriage of his daughter, Kit, to young Eddie Watkins would force another showdown, if it ever took place. So Eddie was part of your plan, too. The next morning, only five minutes after the first call from the sheriff, Eddie Watkins comes to your office over Hyde's Grocery on Park Street. Like the rest of them, when trouble strikes, he's come to you for advice. I want you to know, Uncle Josh, I didn't want to bother you at a time like this. Of but... course, Eddie. But Kit and I have no one else to turn to. She believes me, Uncle Josh. She knows I had nothing to do with but it. Eddie, why do you feel you're under suspicion? You know how your brother felt about me. How he thought I was taking Kit away from him. The whole town knew we didn't get along. I know, but after all, that doesn't mean... The night before last, we had the worst quarrel of all. I said some things I didn't mean. Well... 
You know how the town is. Yes, they're very impetuous sometimes. They do things without thinking. Mm, if I only had some time. The sheriff wants me to report to him right away. Yes. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's what you'll have to do, Eddie. Go down there and face it out. It's too bad. Why? We all loved my brother very much. I'm so afraid in the heat of the moment, the people, the sheriff, too, are liable to do things they'll be sorry for later. Oh, wait a minute. You mean... I know this town, Eddie. Anything can happen. Lord, if I only had a couple of days to talk to them, reason with them. Well, I... I haven't been summoned officially. I but could... the sheriff has asked you to see him, so that's that. I'll do all I can, Eddie, but you know what a handicap I'll have. You, you need a couple of days, huh? What sort of question, I guess. Well, I... I guess I'll have to make my own decision about how soon I report to the sheriff. Yes, Eddie. There are some things we have to decide for ourselves. Eddie Watkins, why, why, Sheriff, I can't believe it. I didn't say he's guilty, Judge. All we know is he's the only one who might have had a motive. But just because Eddie quarreled with my brother... Oh? He did have a quarrel then? And he was opposed to his marrying kid. But... That doesn't mean Eddie would... Uh, maybe uh, not. But the smart thing for young Eddie to do is to show up here and start explaining. That's what I can't understand. What do you mean, sir? I sent for him three hours ago. Why isn't he here? You mean... You think... Eddie would run away? Hmm. You just gave me an idea. <laughs> Oh, God. Kid, darling, you must get hold of yourself. They say Eddie killed Father Uncle Judge. They say he was trying to run away when they picked him up at the station. Oh, dear, dear. It's going to be all right. I guess. They have no evidence, dear, don't you see? But Father was killed with Eddie's gun. With Eddie's gun? Nonsense. How could they possibly know that? Oh, I don't understand it, but the sheriff says they examined the bullet. Very unusual size. An Italian pistol Eddie brought back from overseas. But what does Eddie say to that? He says the gun was stolen last week. They don't believe it. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, Kip, dear. You'd better try and rest now. I'm going down to see the sheriff. <laughs> Listen to me, Sheriff. Now, you listen to me. I, I know how you feel, Josh. I know what Henry meant to you. But don't you see, Sheriff. And I know you're too kind-hearted to believe Eddie Watkins or anybody else could have killed him. But the point is, somebody did. Eddie's young, impetuous, madly in love. Anyone else in that frame of mind could commit murder, but not Eddie. You're right. What? I don't think he did it either. Why? I see... We searched everywhere for his gun, and we can't locate it. Well, that's wonderful, sir. What are you going to do? Hold him till the first of the week, and then release him. Release him? That's what you generally do when you haven't got a case. At least I'm happy for Kit. If anything happened to Eddie, I don't believe she'd ever get over it. Oh, yes, of course. And I, I just better be going now. Yes. Yeah. Well, you uh, you can tell Kit about it. I will. I'm taking her to Henry's funeral in an hour. I'll tell her the, uh, the good news. It was hard not to show the shocked surprise you felt when the sheriff told you there was no case against Eddie. Wasn't it, Josh? You'd planned that part so carefully, throwing Eddie's gun into the river knowing the unusual size of the bullet would trap him. You curse yourself as you stand at Kit's side at the church, with the whole town gathered round to share your grief. And later at the cemetery, you listen with bowed head and moist eyes 
as the minister commits poor Henry <laughs> unto the earth from whence he came. There now, girl. He's gone to his reward. You raise your head when it's over with a silent glance of appreciation at each group of mourning friends. Your mind still searching for the answer to Eddie Watkins and the missing gun. It's after you've shown Kit to the waiting car that the answer comes. Yes, you are right, Josh. They're your people. And the sorrow you display is their sorrow. You feel it on every side now as the car moves off. As you turn to a couple of the men moving up to express their sympathy. We're awfully sorry, Josh. It's a terrible thing. Terrible. Thank you, Dave. Frank, for coming out here, leaving the bank, the store. Well, there was a little to do. Whole town closed up today. It's, uh, it's almost like something that happened to you, Josh. Thank them all for me, will you? I, I, I'm not quite up to it myself. They understand, Josh. No, and uh, tell them not to be too bitter about Eddie Watkins. You can't change that. I mean, in view of the fact that he's going to be released. Huh? Released. We haven't heard anything about that. Well, the sheriff knows what he's doing. We must put our faith in him. What? But he's not. He, he knows that he's guilty, that he's murdered your brother. Everybody knows it. What kind now, of please, justice is this? Dave, don't talk violence. You know how I feel about those things. But he's right, Josh. That boy took a life. He's got to pay. I've seen it in other towns. Bloodshed. An eye for an eye. Lynchings. Sometimes that's the only answer. No, Dave. No one can ask the people to take the law into their own hands. But, Josh... Even if Eddie is guilty, if the law says he goes free, that is what we must accept. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Kit, please. Bye, right, Josh. Free. That young murderer going free. Uh. Josh won't even lift a hand against him. Maybe it's up to Josh's friends to lift a hand. Here you are, Josh. Glad to serve you. You, uh, never been in my place before. No, Tom, I haven't. It, uh, well, sort of gives me a strange feeling seeing you take a drink. First one in 22 years, huh? Longer than that. Well, you must feel pretty bad. Tom, I figure the best thing is to go away. Maybe find some other place to live. Oh, you mean you'd leave town? Oh, no, Josh. wasn't going to say anything. What is it? Do you think the people here are letting you down? Well, I... They haven't, Josh. No, they're very angry about the sheriff releasing Eddie Watkins. Very angry. But they don't know what to do. In the past, they've always had you to lead them. Well, I can't lead them now, Ellie. I'm not at all sure that we'd be doing the right thing. You know what everybody else does. That Eddie Watkins is guilty. You do believe that, don't you, Josh? Well, Ellie, I, I, I'd rather not. I knew it. I'll never say it, Ellie. Not, not when I think of what could happen. Well, there'd be a meeting, Ellie, uh, on the outside of town. Uh, the, the men folks, mostly. A meeting? Of course. There'd be speeches and angry words. Quick action. A meeting? I can see it. Building like a juggernaut. That's why I'm afraid. There'd be no stopping them, Ellie. No stopping them until... Until justice was done. Ellie. You don't have to tell us anymore, Josh. And you'll never have to go away. Come on. Uh, no, Ruth. Now, Ellie, I, I told you nothing. Oh, now, where are you going? Where... <laughs> That's only a rumor, Ellie. He isn't going to leave. It isn't a rumor. I tell you, I talked to him myself, Frank. Huh? He thinks we've deserted him. But what can we do? 
I don't even know where to start. We've talked to the sheriff, Ellie, and he thinks that well, we ought to... The sheriff is a fool. This is more than law and opinion, Frank. Josh Ellerby's given his life to this town. He has a right to expect something in return. Yeah, if only there was some way that we could think this thing... You up. could call a meeting, Frank. Everyone's of the same mind. Get them together and... A meeting? Ellie, do you know what could happen? Why, if that mob ever got stirred up, Of they course could... I know. But when it's over, our murderer will have gotten what he deserves. And even Josh will thank us. He'll understand and thank us. And Josh won't leave Hampton Crossing, then? No. A meeting? Yeah. I wonder if Len Frawley would let us use his barn. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, Frank. The barn. Sure you can. I'll be there myself. Want me to make some calls? <laughs> you bet I will. What time? Probably fun. Eight o'clock. I'll be there. Frawley's barn. Eight sharp. I'll say we can make it. What got into them? Oh, Uncle Josh, they met tonight at Frawley's farm. They've come here to the jail to take care of it. Good Lord. Oh. Sheriff, isn't there some way to stop them? No, they're all riled up. They're half crazy. They'll kill Eddie. I told them. What about it, Sheriff? You can't just let them... They're not going to let them. That boy is innocent, Josh. Of course. I found out today that he couldn't have done it. Kid, I know where he was when your father was killed. And Josh, he didn't go anywhere near your brother's place that night. His alibi is complete. It's perfect. Can't you tell them that? Listen, do you think I could make myself heard? Have you some sort of plan, Sheriff? Yes. If they keep coming, I'm going to take him out of here. Take him out? But how? The east wing exit is just a few yards from the river. If they storm the front door here, they won't be watching. Oh, isn't it an awful chance to see? Eddie could make it. I talked to him. He's a good swimmer, and with his life depending I on it... I see. If it comes to that, Josh, I want to keep their attention out front. And maybe if you talk to them... I'm not going to wait for that, Sheriff. I'm going out there right now. Try to reason with them. Be careful, Uncle Joe. I'm not afraid, Chief. They're my friends. They trust me. They may even listen to me now. You sure about that, Josh? The uh, sheriff told me himself. He's letting Eddie out the east wing, huh? Yes, the east wing. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, Josh, up to now, you've been so anxious to save the boy. Why are you telling us this? Well, I, I, I haven't time to go into that. I, I've told you that's enough. Uh-huh. When's it going to happen? Any minute now. That's good enough for me. The east wing, huh? Come on, Bill. Yeah. Let's have a look. You're right, Sheriff. There's no reasoning with them. They, you've got to get Eddie out now. Oh, you think I'm doing the right thing, Josh? Uh, do you think it'll work? It's the only way, but hurry, man, hurry. All right, I'll go for it. Good luck, Sheriff. Good luck. <laughs> It's all over now, isn't it, Josh? Your scheme is all but complete. You can't lose with a mob on the front steps of the courthouse, the rifleman waiting for Eddie Watkins at the east wing. And one more thing will make it perfect, Josh. The thud of a battering ram against the big front door tells you there's no going out that way. So you walk down the deserted west corridor of the building toward the third exit. Yes, you want to be out there now among your friends pleading with them at the top of your lungs, shouting at them to stop at the exact moment Eddie Watkins is slipping out that east wing door to certain death. You reach the west door, open it cautiously, and peer out into the darkness. 
<laughs> the Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, a word of wisdom to Mr. Average Driver. You spend about $100 a year for gasoline. That's a lot of money. You'd like to be sure it's buying the gasoline that's tops in quality, the gasoline that gives you top performance from your car. Well, you can be sure if you just keep two points in mind when you buy gasoline. One, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. After all, the only way any gasoline can put more thrilling performance into your car is by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you get better mileage. So there you have it in a nutshell, the reason why Signal's good mileage is so important to you. And the reason Signal says, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the Whistler. Yes, there was mob violence that night in Hampton Crossing, a night no one who saw it will ever forget. It's still there, burning in the back of their minds, like the torches in the hands of the mob that stormed the Hall of Justice. No one was ever brought to trial, because in the eyes of the law, the whole town was guilty, not just the two riflemen who waited in the shadows near the rear of the courthouse. The whole wing of the building's dark. You're sure you'll come out there? Hey, you heard what Josh said, didn't you? No, well, I'm still not sure. What if he... Hey, could... wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Look, look. Yeah. Yeah, you were right. It's dark. I can't quite make him out, but... Huh? Hold still. There he is. That takes care of Eddie Watkins. Nice work, fellas. I might teach the sheriff a lesson. Murderers won't get out of this town. Well, there he is, boys. Turn him over. Right. There you go, Eddie. Good Lord, what have we done? It's Josh. Bill. Bill. He told us the truth. What do you mean? He he said they were going to get out of out the east wing. That's why we waited here on the west side. Yes, we we figured he'd do anything to save that boy. We were sure that this time, for once in his life, Josh Ellaby would tell a lie. You'd better get back up to Eddie Kitts. He needs you. I still can't believe it. Uncle Josh betrayed us. He told him the plan. He, he could only have had one reason. I know, Jack. It was Uncle Josh who killed my father, wasn't it? Yeah. But we're the only ones who know that, Kit. And we're the only ones who'll ever know. What happens now? Nothing. He died a martyr, Kit. He's going to stay one. You see, as long as the people of this town can keep on believing in Josh Ellerby and remember what they did to him, There'll never be another mob killing in Hampton Crossing. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story was Herb Butterfield. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.